Your efforts to acquire the submine data have been proving effective. My reconstruction continues apace. This is not the first time the Hive have sought to steal my weaponry. I froze an entire brood on Mars to stop their last attempt. Despite their persistence, they have never once succeeded. In no small part thanks to the Vanguard. This time will prove no different. My diagnostics indicate that we nearly have enough data to complete the repair cycle. Once the Warsats are under our control, I will lay waste to the Wrathborn. If they so desire to witness the power of a war mine, then I will gladly oblige. Time to snag another submine fragment, Guardian. Get in and out before they even know what's hit them. as a deterrent, and her death facilitated necessary developments for an invasion. That coincides with my experience in other timelines. The second collapse always seemed like it was waiting for some kind of trigger. But it's not something that we could have avoided. Maybe some things are set in stone. Even stone can be eroded, Elsie. You and I must once again take the long view to find victory. We have no time for pleasantries, Osiris. I bring grim tidings. My Tachyons have been trying to make sense of Zivu Arath's tactics. Her armies are legion, yet she commits minimal forces to battle. Minimal forces? Every Wrathborn we cut down is replaced by two more. She could replace them tenfold, so why does she show restraint? Her worm feeds on warfare. The more violent the act, the greater the power she draws from it. Much like Sabathun's worm fed on guile and deceit. Do you mean to say that... This is not a war. It is a ritual. 
Her death singers weave their magic and prepare for a grand sacrifice. If so, our strategy remains unchanged. Retake the war sets and eradicate the Wrathborn. Just as Zivu Arath desires. The Warsats are immensely powerful. Their use would result in unparalleled destruction. She cares not which side is obliterated. Her worm will gorge itself on the carnage either way. She would turn her armies into blood sacrifices. And the Warsats would be the blade. Overwhelming force has proven to be the only effective tactic against the Hive. Without it, I... I do not know what to do. Then I suggest you think of something, and quickly. I will apprise your vanguard of these findings. So I might get them uh, February, something like that. I don't know if the weather will permit sword tests at that time. Anyway, so this is a Shamshir from swordbuy.com. They sent this for review, and I'll be curious to see how it performs. It is very affordable. Uh, some might say suspiciously so. Uh, there's always some concerns about the budget range, uh, how it's going to do. But uh, I'll find out how it cuts and how well it holds up and all of that. Was it was in reason, again, I'm not trying to, trying to, try to chop down a tree with it, but... Uh, The Warsats are a means to an end. Zivu Arath will bask in the destruction they bring and open the Ascendant Plain above Earth, as she did on Tora Bottle. It does not matter who pulls the trigger. We must cease our efforts to restore the War Mind. No. We've worked too long and too hard to stop now. Rasputin is our best shot at winning this war. That is precisely my concern. He is a weapon made to be wielded. He is more than a weapon. He's our ally. And he will act in humanity's best interest. Are you certain? He has kept secrets in the past. Acted without counsel or consensus. So have you. Rasputin's made mistakes, but he's learned from them, the same as the rest of us. Then I propose we aim not for total victory, but a stalemate.
Allow Rasputin to prevent Zivul Wrath from claiming her prize, and refrain from using it himself. It's settled then. We hold the line. Machine of war, built for a singular purpose, to destroy any and all threats to humanity. Clovis and I disagreed on what constituted such threats, but not on the means to the end. On Mars, I developed the escalation protocol to combat the Hive, ever-increasing application of force in the face of rising opposition. Was I playing into Zivu Arath's hands even then? Has she always accounted for my methodologies? What purpose do I serve if my actions place humanity in danger? Am I even capable of developing a solution without mass destruction? This is a calculation I have never had to make. It will take time to run the necessary combat simulations. Follow the directions of the Vanguard and the Interim. I will contact you if and when I have determined our next objective. Ikora was so bright, so... Full of promise, how she glowed, like the light filled her. But it was her eyes that convinced me to take her as my apprentice. What did you see in them? Hunger. She was desperate to prove herself back then. I knew the feeling well. And you know it again now. When Ikora looks in my eyes, what do you think she sees? Everything that she always has. She pities me, Mara. As you and I have pitied others. Those who hang on our every word. Your cultists, my people. Do not mistake Ikora's pity for disdain. If she pities you, it is out of love. I have no love for the cult of Osiris. No. Ask me what I see. When I look into your eyes, Osiris. I will not. You don't tell me just the same. I see a man who is afraid he'll never be able to live up to the expectations that other people have placed on him. A man so afraid to hurt or be hurt that he spent his very long, very accomplished life holding those same people at arm's length. This burden. This... Inheritance of guilt. It is Ikora's, too. I never wanted this for her. As your mentors never wanted it for you. 